one of my favorite chefs and one of my favorite, favorite cookbook authors. He is among the world's most lauded culinary masters. He's widely known for his dynamic and inventive, mind-blowing dishes. And he's a restaurateur, a writer, and now the author of his newest and fourth book called Plenty More Vibrant Vegetable Cooking from London's Otto Lenghi. Chef Yotam Ottolenghi, welcome to our show. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you, Mark. Your last book, which was called Plenty, greatly changed the way people cooked, ate, and viewed vegetables. So what's Plenty More? How does this differ from your third book? Plenty More essentially is uh, my work, my cooking, the new ingredients that I've been cooking with and exploring over the last four years. It's been four years since Plenty was published, and I have been traveling, seeing the world, and getting a better understanding about new ingredients. But also, I've kind of changed how I work with my f with more familiar ingredients. I put them together in new context. I try to look at them in different from different angles. Lettuce is braised, for instance. Rather, you know, we all put our lettuce in salads. I put it in a braise with a nice stalks with some fava beans and peas, and make it into something extremely springy and serve it with parmesan rice. When I think about your food, what I think about is a blaze of color and a really bright, spicy taste. Not too spicy, but perfectly spicy, with flavors that really enhance the ingredients. And you're just the master at that. And the kitchens in which you cook must be filled with all kinds of flavorings. What's your favorite <laughs> spice? I change my favorite spice, but there's always going to be a spice. And there's always going to be a bunch of herbs, lots of herbs. Yeah. I don't like uniform kind of flat experiences with food. I like, I mean, I love a pea soup, but in my pea soup, I want little crunchy bits and little tasty bits all of a sudden to keep me on my toes when I eat. Well, I just opened uh, to the page of the pea and mint croquettes. Yes. Now, how gorgeous are they? <laughs> pancakes, really, or fat pancakes made out of peas mint leaves, a little garlic, eggs, flour, panko breadcrumbs, an unusual combination, and yet put together in an unusual new way. Yeah. Never had peas like that before. How yes. nice. But yes. not everything is uh, in your cookbooks is vegetarian. This particular book this is, is, is yeah. but in other books, you're right, I have published non-vegetarian non recipes, and I'm not a vegetarian myself. But I do like to put the emphasis on vegetables because I think there are, there's more of them that it's more interesting and it really where we should be heading, eating more vegetables and less meat, even if you don't stop eating meat and I enjoy meat, it's important to eat more vegetables. But I think you're very, you know, very right on in that philosophy. People don't need to, to eat meat three times a day. No, I mean, it don't. doesn't need to feature on a plate for breakfast, lunch and dinner. You can eat meat once a day or once every few days. You make it more special. Right. And I think that's how meat used to be. And then it could be better. It could be better. It tastes better. No, it because, does. Because you don't have it all the time. And but it could be raised better, too. Absolutely. So what's your newest big discovery that you can I, use in the kitchen? I have, uh, in this book in particular, I've been discover I've been working with vegetables that have been, I call them unloved. Because I don't think they're not good vegetables. I just don't, I don't think they have had the best publicity and I'm talking about turnips and cauliflowers and all sorts of greens that, uh, and root. What, like I, I, rutabaga? And rutabaga as well. Yeah, I've got a whole, I have, <laughs> I have a, a recipe with rutabaga. And the thing is, when, and I know that yeah, kind of instinctively you say, oh gosh, this is not what I like. But I just think it's wrong. I think there's no such thing as a bad vegetables. There's just bad cooking with certain vegetables. And nice this it. is where I use rutabaga for stuffing uh, Stuffed peppers. Stuffed peppers with rutabaga. Ugh. Your palate is so different from so many others. How do you describe your palate? I find it difficult to describe. I used the term sunny food once, and I think it, it kind of... I gravitated toward, towards places where the sun shines because I like big flavors. I love Asian food and Indian food and Middle Eastern food where you've got all uh, this abundance of ingredients that spend quite a lot of time in the sun and spending time in the sun makes flavors concentrate whether it's in the herbs or the vegetables. So this is the where I gravitate towards those parts of the world where it's very sunny and you get big flavors. Well, you thank you so that. much. Thank you, Martha, Well, it's great so to much. see you, and I hope to be in London soon to savor more of your delectable cooking. Love to have you. And I'm going to try a lot of these recipes. Mm, thank thank you. you very much.